Hello fellow intelligent investors, my name is René Zalman and in this video I would like to discuss the idea that the greatest results on the stock market are fueled by twin engines. So in this video I will discuss which two components are needed if you want to enjoy the returns of a multi-bagger. So stay tuned. Have you ever wondered how you can make your hard-earned money work for you? Have you ever dreamed of building generational wealth and leaving a legacy? My name is René Zellman and I'll teach you how you can manage and invest your money with confidence, a long-term vision and without losing your mind. Join me on my journey of intelligent investing and learn how smart people can compound their money effectively and accumulate wealth. Alright, so essentially I would like to discuss how investors can enjoy the returns of a 100 bagger, so a stock that returns $100 for every $1 invested. And in his book 100 Beggars, author Chris Meyer describes the aforementioned twin engines. And he argues that they almost always need to be present, over time at least, for a stock to achieve 100 beggar status. So what is he referring to when he's speaking of twin engines? Well, one of the components, one of the 100 beggar engines, is internal business growth. To achieve 100 beggar status, businesses need to grow at a fast pace for a long period of time. Meyer wrote in his book, Remember, you need growth, and lots of it. A fact I will repeat again and again. Let's take a look at what kind of growth rates are needed for a stock to become a multi beggar Let's simplify things maybe a little bit and consider the kind of growth that is needed to be for a stock to become a 10 beggar in 10 years. Well, if we use the rule of 72 to estimate how long it takes for a stock to double, then we can estimate that it takes a company that can sustain growth or a growth rate of 15% five years to double. 72 divided by 15 is roughly five. Keep in mind that we are just sticking to back of the envelope math here. So a compounded annual growth rate of 15% gives us 4x in 10 years. And a CAGR, so compound annual growth rate of 15% over 20 years, gives us 16x. And compounded growth of 15% over 30 years can uh, 64x your investment. So based on this uh, back of the envelope math, you can already tell that it's pretty damn hard to reach 100 beggar status. Only very, very few businesses can actually sustain above average growth rates for such a long period of time. In a capitalist system, any excess returns will usually be eroded away over time, as competition will be attracted by these returns, will compete with the business and then, as a result, lower returns for all of the players involved. So a prerequisite for a stock to become a 100 beggar is certainly that the company possesses a strong and maybe more importantly a durable mode that can fend off competitors. However, even the strongest businesses in the world might struggle sustaining growth rates of 15% of more for a long period of time. And that's because of the law of large numbers. In business, the law of large numbers states that as a business expands, uh, maintaining high growth rates becomes increasingly difficult. That's why the easiest way to have a high compound rate for a long period of time is to start from a small base. And this is a concept we actually discussed in a previous video of mine, in my video on Monish Papri's uh, $50 billion rule. And I will add a link to that video to the description box down below. Thomas Phelps, the author of the original 100 Becker book, the book that inspired Chris Meyer, actually included the following table that shows how much and for how long a stock must compound its value to multiply a hundredfold. And I will add another graph here According to Chris Meyer's book, it takes most companies between 16 and 30 years to reach the honor of being a 100 beggar. So there must be something else here that can maybe speed up the process. A growth rate of 15% over a long period of time, which is already very rare, is hardly enough to enjoy the returns of a 100 beggar. And that's why the greatest results on the stock market are fueled by twin engines. Growth is one of these engines and multiple expansion is the other one. And Chris Meyer actually addressed this as well and I already showed you the first part of a quote from his book. Let's include the second part here. Remember, you need growth and lots of it. A fact I will repeat again and again. Ideally, you need it in both the size of the business 
and in the multiple the market puts on their stock. If you are not familiar with the term multiple expansion, I can highly recommend my video on valuation multiples. But basically the idea is that when you buy a stock, the entry valuation multiple is lower than the exit valuation multiple someone else is willing to pay you when you want to sell their stock. Let's say you buy a business for a price to earnings multiple of 5. If you can sell the business for a PE of 10, you essentially doubled your money and for this the business didn't even need to grow. So the idea is that the very good investments usually start from lower valuations. And then the valuation multiple expands over time as maybe the narrative or the sentiment changes. So if we just take a look at the business growing 50% annually again. We said that it takes 20 years for the stock to return $16 for every $1 invested. If we now assume that the multiple doubles, we can get to 32x. And if the uh, multiple triples, the stock almost reaches 50 beggar status business growth of 15% over 13 years, we said, gives us a return of 64x. And if we now add multiple expansion to that formula, we could get to a 100 bagger. So that was the theoretical part. Let's take a look at some real-world examples. In his book, Considering Stocks, Hits and Misses of a Sensible Investor, Heike Kesky Valley shared the following table that showed how all of the listed 100 beggars, the Amazons, Monsters and Adobes of the world, enjoyed both business growth, growth of revenue, but they also benefited from a significant expansion of their valuation multiples. And I would actually like to take a look at one particular company that you cannot find in this table. Let's do a quick case study here. Well, Xpel is another company that massively benefited from the twin, twin engines that we basically introduced in this video. And Expel has actually been one of the best performing stocks since 2013 and actually achieved the status of a very of a 100 bagger very quickly within seven years. Basically very high growth and a much more favorable multiple led to the remarkable performance of Expel stock. At least for those investors that were able to buy right and maybe more importantly, those investors that were able to hold on throughout this seven year period. So first of all, Expel was a small company in 2013. At the end of the year 2012, it had a market cap of only $6 million. So clearly it was starting from a very small base. It was essentially a nano cap stock. And back then the stock was trading at a price of 26 cents per share and as of March 2021 the stock is worth more than $50. The guys of Co-Investor Club, which is basically a community for value-oriented investors, well they have recently published an excellent piece of writing in which they uh, analyzed Expel's journey to becoming a 100 beggar. And here's the overview they included in their paper for the end of year 2012. So in this overview, you can see that Expel was not only a nano cap stock. No, moreover, the company was also trading at very cheap valuation multiples. EV to sales was 0.6 and EV to EBIT was 5.77. So let's fast forward to today, or more specifically to the end of the year 2019. We can actually compare the table from the end of 2012 to the table from the end of year 2019. And we can see both growth and revenue earnings per share and EBIT, but also an expansion of the multiple. And in 2020, the stock really picked up steam. If we consider the development from 2013 to today, we can see, we can see an even more extreme expansion of the multiple. The EV to EBIT multiple is now above 60, and the EV to sales multiple is now around 9. Xpel's market cap is now an astonishing $1.4 billion. So clearly the stock enjoyed the tailwind of an expansion of its multiple. But internal business growth is also quite impressive, as these charts show that uh, Expo was able to grow its revenue quite significantly. It's EBIT too, and we can also see growth in net income. Now clearly every investor dreams of A. finding such a stock, and B. having the emotional robustness to hold on to this stock for this wild, wild ride, because they have actually also been um, some quite significant drawdowns. Let me just show you here how Expel's stock was described in 2013 
and a write-up on Value Investors Club. If you don't know what Value Investors Club is, it's basically an exclusive online investment club where top investors can share their investment ideas. Feel free to pause the video here to read it. I would say, at least in retrospect, this investment thesis sounds so simple, doesn't it? So what's the bottom line here? Well, to find a 100 beggar, you likely need both earnings or business growth and an expansion of the multiple. And generally speaking, I would say it's better to buy expensive businesses that are fast growing. That's at least better than buying a declining, declining business that is trading at a low multiple. But if you are truly, truly hunting for 100 beggars, you have to pay attention to the firm's growth prospects, but also the valuation, a low entry price, in combination with a, a company's long-term profit potential, is critical and can do wonders if you are looking for yeah, phenomenal long-term returns. I'll also add that almost all 100 beggar companies are run by owner operators. So those are corporate leaders that have high insider ownership. They have the right incentives and usually have a long-term vision and ignore Wall Street's obsessive focus on short-term results. Their stock might also be less liquid if insider ownership is really high, which might lead to less competition by institutional investors. And that should already be it for today. As always, may your finances and investments prosper. Good luck. Uh -huh.